And when I stepped outside, I looked out and I saw everybody's houses. I saw my property, I saw their property in these houses, and everybody's lights were on. So everybody was in their house, alone, isolated. And I'm thinking, and I laughed, because I'm like, this is so interesting. I am outside and it's beautiful out tonight. And I do the same thing. I go in my room, I stay there, and I don't, like, interact with people. I get in, like, a... I isolate myself. I cut myself off as well. We all are participating in this. And I felt like when I was outside, I started to have this... Like, I kept... It was actually kind of funny, because I'm sort of, like... I sort of talked to myself a little bit. Because I would, like... A thought would come to me, and this, like, lesson was learned. And I kept on going, like, I understand. Like, I was in a... <laughs> like, I was in a class, like, learning from a, a mentor or a teacher, like... I understand. Like, I did that, like, a bunch of times. Like, just like, oh, I get it. Okay. Like, it was like a little lesson was learned, you know? And one of the lessons I learned is that everything has a role. Like, um, the fish is a fish. The fish will always do what fishes do. The trees will always do what trees are meant to do. And the grass and the air and everything. We all are supposed to fulfill a role, a part of a greater whole. And what's wrong now is we are off... We don't, we're not fulfilling the roles that humans are meant to fill. Not only on the bigger sense, like ecologically and, in our, and on our planet, but also within our cultures, within our societies. Everything's just, it's like, I, I recognize how important that role, how roles are. Not, not necessarily like these manufactured roles, like you're a woman and you're a man, you have to fulfill these gender roles. You know, not, no, like, like, and I also felt like, I didn't, I recognized that I'm not a man. Like, in the in the way that we all like yeah i'm a man i'm physically i'm an adult i'm you know legally a man but we never had this rite of passage like there's we're, i almost feel like we're all stuck in this transitionary phase we've never really become men there's never been something that has occurred that has made it clear to us you are now a man you now take on the responsibilities of men maybe it's joining the army well, that's one rite of passage that we have. You Surviving know. a war. Right. Yeah, but that just traumatizes people. That's not what manhood's about. You know, we're not supposed to become traumatized, you know. Maybe we are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we are, yeah. But, um... Maybe everyone is a child at heart for the entirety of their lives unless they have something traumatizing happen to them. Right. At that point, they cease yeah. to become a child and they become an adult. Mm -hmm. And so, trauma is the great righthood of an adult i don't know i mean in tribal cultures they they'll typically do something what we would call traumatic to get men yeah. to be men i mean they get them to do some kind of really physically emotionally uh, mentally challenging thing but the tribe doesn't just ignore them and say like oh you're traumatized we don't know how to handle you anymore it's like the culture itself knows how to incorporate that experience into the greater whole of the of the tribe or the the culture whatever it is you know like, there's, there's a step-by-step -step process they go through to make sure that everybody gets through the experience whole, you know, as a whole person. It's like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't fracture the person, it doesn't, it doesn't alienate them, it makes them more a part of the community. And that's what we don't have. Like, how many, how many veterans commit suicide in this country, like, every day? It's because they don't feel like, they're not valued, because first of all, the war they fought was based on lies. And many of them are aware of that when they go over there, and many of them learn it as they come back, you know. And then, they don't have the infrastructure anymore to, 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 to care for these people mentally or physically. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like, in our culture, it's really dysfunctional that way. And I didn't think about this on the trip, but this is just something that I, you know, was brought up right now. But, uh, but then the rest of the trip, like, I threw up at one point because I, I got really anxious. Um, I went inside, and... Uh, after being outside for a while, you know, I, I went inside, and I was sitting on my bed, and I was two hours in. I checked the time, which I shouldn't have done, because I was like, it was about midnight, you know, I checked the time. I'd only been tripping for two hours, and I'm like, oh my god, I have another, like, five hours left of this. I don't know if I can do this. Oh my god, what's happening to me right now? Did I take too much? Holy shit. And this, like, it was like anxiety, anxiety. And I got up and ran to the bathroom and threw up. And then I felt fine. I felt a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I... Well, how long does a trip normally last? Um, I fell asleep around 5 a.m., so this was about a seven-hour experience. Okay, but on, on average? Yeah, it's about five to seven hours. Eight hours, depending okay. on how much. And so it's bad to look at the time? No, it's just... It, I, I think it triggered something. Like, I realized, like, I've only... It felt a lot longer than two hours. So when I saw the time, I'm like, holy shit, I have another 
three, four hours left of this. I don't know if I'm ready. Like, I don't know if I'm in for this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I got kind of worried, but then I threw up and the physical anxiety went away, but I still felt kind of like stuck in this like cycle of misery, like, like reflecting on how, like, I don't know how personal I want to get on this podcast, but there are certain sore spots inside of me, things that are not functional, things that are not healthy. And I, like, in a psychological way, like how, like, for instance, like, I'll just sort of, without saying it exactly, I was thinking about my past relationships, you know, like, my relationships with uh, women, my, my idea of what I expect and want from a woman, which is, you know, sexual in nature, often. And I've been listening to this uh, Buddhist uh, teacher, and in fact, I listened to this, this, this guy um, towards the end of my trip because he really calmed me down, but he's a, um, he's a Buddhist psychologist or something like that. Like, he's a Buddhist spiritual teacher. His name is Jack Cornfield, with a K, which is pretty cool. <laughs> it's a cool name. But he... Did he choose it himself? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but he, uh, he, was, he teaches... He's, he had, there's a series of lectures that I have that I've been listening to where he talks about Buddhist psychology, like the concepts in Buddhism, and, like, the, the things that we need to kind of overcome in order to achieve pure peace of mind and enlightenment, basically. And first of all, he has the most soothing, calming voice. I've never heard anybody that has such a voice that just soothed me. But something he talks about in the first of this um, lecture series is because the concept of grasping, which is like greed. Basically, for whatever reason, we can't just let something come into our lives and then go away. You know, that's how life is. Life is a series of changes. It's always flowing and changing. And yet we, because we don't feel nourished or for whatever reason we have, and I address the reason why I, I, I feel this way. I, I had a sort of a glimpse. I almost want to say glimpses because they weren't full on visions, but they were, they were almost images that came into my mind of why do I feel that I can never get enough? Like in a relationship, how come I can never receive enough affection? Why don't I feel like I get enough nourishment emotionally? And why do I often want to isolate myself because I'm afraid of that part of myself? And the reason is, is because... I was an emotion. I, I received everything I needed as a child, but there was a lack of emotional nourishment, and it's no one's fault because I saw my mother, and she had a lack of emotional nourishment, and her parents as well. My father had some similar circumstances. It's just, it's the concept of samsara. It's like an endless cycle of of negative patterns, like just keeps on going on and on and on, like like we see it in the world all the time, like negative patterns that keep on like uh, reinforcing themselves. And that's what happens throughout the generations. And I thought about that. And I'm like, so we're mutilated. Like, I can never get enough because I never received... And not, again, this isn't about blaming anybody. This is just a fact. That sometimes we don't receive the developmental tools. I don't know how else to say that. The things that we need as a developing child sometimes. And it has a long-term effect on our ability to communicate with people... You know, that's where drug addiction comes from. Any sort of addictive patterns that we have come f m mainly from um, some sort of neglect or some sort of some sort of thing that wasn't given to you from childhood. One of, some of the most important years of your life is your first five years of your life. Um, anyways, I, and this isn't, a, you know, this isn't blaming because I understand it. There was no judgment in this experience. It was just, this is why. And that's the funny thing is I... When before I took the trip, I'm thinking, like, somehow, some, like, I always forget. I always forget that the way that these things work, this, this, this psychedelic experience, it doesn't give you answers as much as it just shows you the obvious truth. It doesn't tell you how to get over these problems. It just says, this is what the problem is. Now that you know, you can deal with it. But after this whole, like, night uh, of, of, of dealing with my shame and my feelings, you know, uh, I just sort of came out of it like clear minded mm -hmm. with a certain sense of clarity. Um, you know, the part like kind of I was saying how I got like anxious. It was interesting. I had the window open and all I started to smell the rain and I'm like, oh, it's going to rain. All of a sudden the rain came down and I've never felt something so, I want to say visceral. It was like as soon as the rain came down, it just as literally as, as I could say it, it washed away any sort of shame or anxiety that I had. I could smell the rain and I could feel it almost. And it just overwhelmed me. And I was like, thank you. Like, thank, thank, I thank the rain. It was like a blessing.